Wow, so much news to cover this week in the world of Steam Deck news. We've got more games newly minted as verified, tons of community-made software updates that expand the deck's capabilities, plus AMD's Z1 and Z1 Extreme processor announcements loom large over the handheld PC gaming space. We're gonna talk about all of this and more today. That's right, it's Steam Deck news time. Grounded is now Steam Deck verified. If you haven't heard about Grounded, it's the Game Pass darling that pits players against the environment and each other in a homage to Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. The Steam store page says, quote, The world is a vast, beautiful, and dangerous place, especially when you've been shrunk to the size of an ant. Can you thrive alongside the hordes of giant insects fighting to survive the perils of the backyard? Now, the game is currently 25% off on Steam, with the Xbox Game Studio Publisher sale going through May 4th. Uh, I haven't played the game myself yet, but I am curious if you guys have tried it. Leave me a comment and let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts on this game. Before we move on though, I wanna thank this video's sponsor, AG1. Have you been wanting to improve your nutritional intake, but struggling to do so in today's busy world? Well, lucky for you, AG1 is convenient nutrition made simple. AG1 is comprehensive, all-in-one foundational nutrition that serves everyone, no matter how athletic you are, what your dietary restrictions may be, or how busy your schedule is. All it takes is one scoop, one minute, once a day, every day. I love using AG1 because it's so easy, it tastes delicious, and it's great for my body. AG1 includes key energy players which work together to maintain my energy levels and keep me going. My favorite thing about AG1 is the fact that I'm taking proactive steps towards better nutrition. While I have been taking daily supplements for years, AG1 provides a more convenient, enjoyable, revitalizing, and well-rounded experience. Plus, it tastes good. To me, it's got a pleasant taste with a hint of sweetness I've come to really enjoy. Use my link below to get a year's supply of vitamin D3 and K2 for free with your first purchase. And thanks to AG1 for sponsoring this video. All right, next up, there's a new release of Lux Trapetta, one of the most interesting compatibility tools for Steam Deck and Linux. Uh, if you're not familiar with Lux Trapetta, it's a Steam Play tool that simplifies the process of running native Linux clients through Steam. For example, if you have Doom in your Steam library and you wanna play the game using Chocolate Doom, Lux Trapetta is your best option. Same goes for Revolt using RVGL, uh, Rollercoaster Tycoon using OpenRCT2, Star Wars Jedi Knight using OpenJK, Morrowind using OpenMW, and so many others. There's a link below for Lux Trapetta's compatibility list. Lux Trapetta simplifies the process 100-fold by getting the open source clients set up and ready to rock. Why am I talking about all this? Well, because the latest version of Lux Trapetta is out right now, version 63. This version updates most engines to their latest build, and they're built against the Steam Linux runtime to make everything that much less of a headache. If you're interested, I've made a video about getting set up with Lux Trapetta here. Go ahead and check that out. All right, next up, EmuDeck just dropped a massive new update for their amazing emulation tool. And they've created a nice landing page that highlights every new feature. The interface has been completely redone to make getting to the most useful functions of EmuDeck easier, as well as adding helpful notification banners. Managing emulators has its own dedicated page where configurations can be individually managed or updated all at once. It's very easy to see at a glance which emulators are installed, which ones need updates, and which ones are available uh, to be downloaded and managed by EmuDeck. Those looking to move their EmuDeck installation to a bigger SD card or storage device will be thrilled with the new migrate installation function. Those who want to just copy over their ROMs and BIOS files from another drive will find the USB transfer wizard to be invaluable. Interestingly, EmuDeck has added a cloud service manager to set up gaming-centric services like Chiaki or Moonlight PC streaming, and even things like Disney+. Plus. These are nice additions for those who want to use their deck for things other than gaming. Next, Steam ROM Manager got a fresh EmuDeck coat of paint, and several new emulators were added in, such as Melon DS, uh, Rosalie's Moopin GUI for N64, and Yuzu Early Access. Possibly the biggest addition is the EmuDeck Store. Now, this isn't a uh, storefront where you're going to be buying, uh, you know, classic Nintendo ROMs or anything, but that's something Nintendo should do. Instead, it's a selection of homebrew games developed to run on various emulators. With all of the AAA and indies competing for our attention, it's hard to know what cool homebrew is actually out there, so I appreciate this feature. 
They've even added a featured game list when you open the store, so it's simple for anyone to dip their toes in the water of homebrew games. So what do you think about all this? Do you use Emudeck? Will you be taking advantage of any of these new features? Leave me a comment and let me know. While you're down there, why not like that smash button? It's the best way to tell YouTube that you want to see more videos just like this one. We have new content here on the channel every Monday, Friday, and Sunday, so make sure that you get subscribed so you don't miss any of that. Now, I want to extend a special thank you to David Lago for his continued support of the show. It's because of the generosity of folks like Dave and the 73 other members of this channel that I'm able to keep uh, making videos just like this for you. You can pledge your support with the links below, and thank you. Okay, last week we saw some leaked performance and specifications, but earlier this week we saw AMD finally let the cat out of the bag. In a press release, they announced their new handheld focus Z1 and Z1 Extreme processors, and the specifications are indeed nothing to scoff at. The Z1 is a 6-core, 12-thread Zen 4 processor with 4 RDNA 3 compute units, while the Z1 Extreme is an 8-core, 16-thread processor uh, with 12 compute units. This is in contrast to the Steam Deck's Van Gogh Zen 2 processor featuring 4 cores, 8 threads, and 8 RDNA 2 compute units. What's possibly even more impressive is that the ROG Ally, the first to feature the Z1, will not only be the first handheld with a 120Hz screen, but said screen will also feature AMD FreeSync with variable refresh rate. Now this is big news as gamers will be able to disable VSync, making games more responsive without experiencing screen tear. The Fox deduced from this new information, it's highly likely that the ROG Ally screen is a native landscape screen. That's huge for a Windows handheld as native portrait screens often cause issues with older titles. Depending on how the ROG Ally is configured by the user, there could be the possibility of VRR saving some battery life too. Now, let me stress how the ROG Ally is configured could make a huge difference out of the box for battery life. W without having the full Ally in my hands, uh, I can't say for certain, but it stands to reason that with some tinkering, the ROG Ally could probably get comparable battery life to the Steam Deck with more power or more battery life at comparable power. Whether Asus is going to set the TDP of the device out of the box to something reasonable is something we'll have to wait and see. If Asus wants to live up to their double the Steam Deck performance, they may have to double the TDP resulting in subpar battery life. Out of the box impressions are huge to the success or failure of a product just look at Apple products. If John Smith buys the ROG Ally from Best Buy as his first PC gaming handheld and the device is loud, hot, and has battery issues, that could be the death knell for public reception. Enthusiasts know that all of that can be altered, but Asus is targeting a larger group here with their first handheld. Another aspect that could sway public opinion is how much all of this is going to cost. Uh, while we haven't got official confirmation yet, Asus told PC Gamer that it will be below $1,000. That's great and all, but if the entry model starts at $800, then Asus will have an uphill battle to say the least, selling to customers used to subsidizing consoles like the Nintendo Switch. Asus has the advantage of being a larger manufacturer, so they can actually bulk order components, uh, but there might be something else happening behind the scenes. This is all just speculation, but in AMD's press release for the Z1, the first use case they mentioned for this new processor was Game Pass. Not Steam, not Destiny 2, not Fortnite. Nobody here at Heavy Element paid much attention to the branding of Game Pass on the ROG Allies Best Buy page, but now we're starting to wonder if Microsoft is helping to foot the bill, or at least a portion of it here, effectively subsidizing the cost of the ROG Ally. I mean, in AMD's press release, they featured a quote from Xbox's head of hardware, uh, Roseanne Sones. All of this makes the ROG Ally seem like Xbox's first unofficial handheld via Game Pass. And I mean, honestly, this could light a fire under Microsoft's ass to make Windows more usable on handheld devices like this, instead of just cramming ads into computers that we've already paid for. But I don't see that on the horizon for them. I really don't see anything uh, built into Windows to manage all of your games. Instead, I suspect it's just going to maintain the PC Game Pass launcher. Next up, a new hardware revision for the Steam Deck has been spotted in the wild. At first glance, the revision appears to change two major things. The top image here is the design of the current model. The bottom is the new design. The first thing to note is the placement of the audio cable. It no longer runs over top of the battery. 
It could also be missing from this picture, but time will tell. The biggest thing I noticed though is the thermal management. A new fan, a shorter heat pipe, and new bracing system. We can also infer that the main board of this model has been redesigned as the APU is presumably underneath the cooler. This means that the RAM chips have also moved and many of these supplemental chips. What could all of this change mean? Is this the Steam Deck 2? Absolutely not. In fact, consumer electronics manufacturers do this all the time. If you're familiar with Xbox 360 hacking, you've probably seen your fair share of Xbox revisions. This is more than likely a revision to improve cooling and other hardware concerns. Now, I'm interested to hear your take on this hardware revision. Did I miss something obvious? Leave me a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Next up, the latest version of the Linux kernel has hit its version 6.3, and it delivers some exciting changes for us gamers and Steam Deck enthusiasts. Let's cover some of the most relevant stuff here. We have improved Steam Deck hardware support, improved support for the Logitech G923 Xbox Edition steering wheel, and support for the 8-Bit Doe Pro 2 wired controller. Now, I've personally been thinking about picking up the 8-Bit Doe Pro 2 controller for a while, but reports had been that it didn't really have support on Linux, uh, but now that drivers are appearing in the kernel, I'm excited to get my hands on it. While it won't be supported on the Steam Deck until kernel 6.3 makes its way to SteamOS, I'm definitely going to be picking one up soon, and there's a link in the description if you want one as well. Now, as we usually do, we're going to end this week's Steam Deck news video uh, talking about the software updates for Steam Deck. Now, on April 25th, the SteamOS 3.4.7 beta hit with a new graphics driver update specifically for Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Now, last week they released a new version of Proton to expand support for Jedi Survivor, and now we're getting a driver update too. This is massive, since Valve is assuming a hardware vendor role here. I mean, typically hardware vendors release new drivers that optimize consumer hardware for massive releases. Uh, and it seems Valve might start doing that for upcoming releases on the Steam Deck too. I'm totally game for that. Then on Wednesday, Valve released a new stable client update that fixed forcefully updated controller layouts when a game using game bundled Steam input configurations updates their official configuration. Now overall, things have been rather slow on the Steam Deck client update front. For almost a year, we've been getting two or more beta client updates per week, with several notable changes each. This last month, though, the number of client updates has slowed to a crawl with one or two minor changes per update. We had almost daily updates at, in the beginning of April, but then on April 6th, we had a normal beta update with six fixes. Then 12 days later, we had another beta client update with only four changes. And it's been 10 days since we've had another beta client update. Valve generally goes on vacation every spring, so that could definitely account for the dry spell here, uh, but let me know your theories in the comments below. Well, that's all of the Steam Deck news that I could find for this week. I want to hear your thoughts about anything we talked about or any story that I might have missed. Sound off in the comments below. I want to shout out my friends on Patreon, my YouTube members, and my ViewSync Premium members who make what I do here a reality. If you believe in the work that I'm doing, you can support this show with the links below, and thank you. That's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for spending your time with me here today, and I'll see you next time.